Hi everybody, it is February the 4th, 2020, and it's time for another Scraptastic Yarns podcast. Have you ever wondered what you do with all these little balls? Yeah, you could tie them into a magic knot cake or a magic knot um, ball, and basically that's where you take all your small uh items and you just roll tie them together roll them up into a ball or you could take and um, actually knit a couple of hats using those and that is what I have been doing knitting up hats with my um, small balls and those I have a couple of those finished we have this one I had this little bit rainbow colored yarn left over so I just knit up a little baby hat this one um, had that little pretty blue and knit up a little hat and these hats are real easy. This is one of um, Margaret O'Lander's. And uh, sheepish, Sheepishly Sharings. Um, I will link this hat pattern down below. It's a great baby hat pattern. It's real quick and easy. And of course you just use all your scraps. And make some cute little baby hats. And, of course, once you learn that technique, you can also apply it to larger hats. And I have had people ask me how you get that, what well, looks like a little heart. Okay, folks, basically it's real simple. You'll knit up to here, and then when you're ready to put that little heart in, um, you basically just start um, alternating the red, the white, every other stitch. And you just do one row of it. And then you go back and do your white. Um, you can do more rows of it, but I think one row is plenty. So that is what I have been doing with um, some of my little scraps. And why am I working on my scraps? Because I'm trying to avoid doing the uh, other whips that I have sitting around. I just didn't feel like doing them, so I'm making some baby hats. Which brings me to this next item. I have a whip in project, whip in progress, which I'm not too thrilled about really, but I keep thinking, you know, I should just go ahead and finish the afghan, and then I'm like, no, let it go. So here's what I'm going to do. I bought two packages of pony beads. And there's a reason that I do this, because um, when people ask me to teach them how to do um, crocheting beads, it's easier to show them with the pony beads than it is to actually show them with the little itty bitty beads. But I had these two packages, and what I have done is I have a, just a little bag, teeny tiny. And in it are 15 red, 15 blue, of uh, the green. I'm going to shake it up. And I'm going to show you the project. That I'm pretty much bored with. And it is simply one that's done with uh, the... Camouflage yarn, and I believe this is like uh, what is it? Moss stitch. It's double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet. Then when you go back, you do the uh, double crochet and the single crochet and the single and the double crochet. For the life of me, I can't think of the better. So I'm going to just shake this up. And I'm going to pull out a bead. And that's going to decide whether I'm going to finish or rip it out. 
If it is red, I will stop. If it's green, I'm going to have to continue it. It's green. Lovely. But that's okay. You know, I did it the fair way. <laughs> Trying to make a decision. So I will finish it now. That means I will work on that this week and hopefully get it done because I'm sick of it. I mean, totally sick of it. I have, my husband has been teasing me because he says you have a whole wall over there in the kitchen that has just bags with projects in it. But to be honest, a lot of those bags are just holding small balls of yarn. Some of those have yarns I've put together to do a project. But did I put the project that I was going to do, you know, at least the name of the project or the pattern in this? No. So, <laughs> I'm trying to work that wall down. Um, because I need to play, need to find a place to store my ukulele when I'm not practicing or playing. So, uh, gotta find a spot. And we determined that, uh, right there on that end of that shelving with a nice big S hook will be a perfect place for that to hang. So now I gotta go through those, figure out what I was gonna do. And I still have the chaotic whip pile over here that I need to do. So I have a lot of work to do. What can I say? It is a fairly short one today, but um, I'm going to make one political comment. <laughs> it has to do with this Iowa caucus thing. I love that they're personal, up, pers up close and personal with the people. People get to ask them about anything they want to ask them. You know, those kind of things. I think it's rather neat that they do, you know, this kind of odd thing like standing in a gym you move to one section of the gym to be counted uh, for which candidate and that kind of thing. But seriously, this software company that devised this thing for the results, and by the way, it's owned by Hillary Clinton. Can you talk about a boondoggle? <laughs> They've had this software for... I believe a year or two, and they never ran a stress test on it. <sighs> oh my. People, if you are doing software, you need to run a soft, you need to run a stress test on it. It's kind of like the thing, you know, when the uh, Obamacare came in. The website went down because nobody bothered to do a stress test on it. And, uh, that's the government for you. You know, they're not going to get things right. Oh, well. Okay. And that kind of falls into this uh, next segment of What in Tarnation. Now, this cup is on my Etsy shop. Uh, there are a couple of t-shirts that are added in there. And, um, yes, you can get your own. But um, let me tell you about this cup. This kitty here was our Caitlin. And Caitlin, one day, I came home with a bag that a friend had given me this fur collar. Caitlin got into that bag and was just hanging all over that bag. We couldn't get her away from it. So my husband wrapped the fur around her neck. Well, after that, it was her fur. I could not use it to make any, uh, well, I'll tell you what I was doing. I was making wool doll coats for 18-inch dolls, and my friend had given me this fur collar that she had taken off of something else. She said, you can use that as a collar for the um, coat. Well, it never got to get used for the collar of the coat because Caitlin claimed it as her own. Now, Caitlin loved on this thing. She would groom it. She would lay on it. She had it by her for quite some time um, 
So this is our little uh, way to recognize Caitlin. And of course, the look on Caitlin's face when we put it on her was like, what in tarnation are you doing? So <laughs> she is now memorialized in this cup. This is an 11 ounce cup. There's 15 ounce cups too. And for full transparency for the t-shirts and the cups and anything else on some of those things that you'll see with crochet sayings or like the Watt in Tarnation, that kind of stuff. It is provided by a drop shipper who is a part who I've partnered up with. And so they will give you a total of time. You know, it usually takes five to six days, maybe um, six to seven days to get it whipped out and to get it shipped. So I have no control over that portion of it. Um, I do make a small amount of money from it, but um, it's been a lot of fun designing. And I have a couple of other t-shirts that I've been working on that will be up in the shop as well that you can purchase. So now it's time for some what in tarnation. This first one happened in a McDonald's parking lot. Can you imagine walking up to, uh, getting out of your car, going up to McDonald's, and then a charging deer knocks you over? Yes. Can't imagine that. A security camera in the parking lot of McDonald's in North Carolina captured the moment a deer ran through the area and tackled a man walking back to his car. Okay, he was walking back to his car. He'd already had a mule. <laughs> Ken Worthy said he and his wife were walking back to the car at the McDonald's in Locust when the deer came charging through. The surveillance footage shows the deer plow into Worthy, knocking him roughly to the ground. Worthy, who was not injured, said the deer left just as quickly as it arrived. He said he managed not to spill his Diet Coke while rolling on the ground. <laughs> he was determined he was going to keep that Coke. This next one I think is kind of cute, you know, um, all of these involve animals this, today. Escaped cow peeks through windows, visits store parking lot. Could you imagine looking out your window and seeing a cow there? Now, granted, in my family, um, my husband's family, they do raise cows. So... There might be any moment you look out the window and see a cow, but if you're in a city, you don't normally see that. A loose cow went for a stroll around a British town and was seen peering into windows of homes before heading into a grocery store parking lot. Witnesses said the cow was spotted at about 10 a.m. Monday walking along King Street in Sillaby, England and taking time to look into homes through the windows. The cow was seen strolling through a Tesco store parking lot before Charmwood police intercepted the bovine on a nearby sidewalk. A police spokesman said the cow had escaped from a nearby farm and was only on the loose for about half an hour. The cow was not injured and police said they had been in contact with the owner about returning the escaped animal home. All of these stories have video that you can see. And of course, I will link that down below so you can go look at the video or see the pictures or whatever. <sighs> alligators, Florida and alligators, you know... You've had those uh, falling iguanas that you've had to deal with when it got so cold. And, of course, you're used to seeing alligators probably quite often. But, have you ever seen an alligator window shopping? Alligator caught window shopping outside Florida stores. Police in Florida responded to a shopping center to apprehend an alligator spotted doing some afternoon window shopping. The Vero Beach Police Department said officers responded about 1.30 p.m. to a report of a four-foot alligator wandering just outside the stores at a local shopping plaza. 
the department shared a video of its animal control officer capturing the reptile with help from the two police officers. And I love window shopping. <laughs> oh, this next one. I'm glad the eagle survived. Um, if you've never had the opportunity to see an eagle in person, they are an amazing creature. Um, they are a lot larger than what you think they are. They are very large animals and um, it's just spectacular. There are times out at the fire hall we will see eagles that are up in the treetops um, because right behind us runs a creek and they go fishing for their lunch. So quite often we get to see the bald eagle in action there at the fire hall. Eagle survives crash through windshield of truck on highway. Now that had to have been scary for the driver as well as that poor little eagle. It's not so big, not so little. Animal rescuers in Connecticut said a bald eagle that was caught on dashboard camera crashing through the window of a truck managed to survive the incident without any broken bones. And that's fantastic. A place called Hope, an animal rescue group based in, based in Killingworth, posted a video to Facebook showing the dashboard camera footage from the truck involved in the crash. The video shows the eagle swoop into the roadway to pick up an apparent piece of food and take off again just in time to crash through the vehicle's windshield. The Connecticut State Police summoned environmental police to the scene and the rescuers brought the eagle to a place called Hope. The sanctuary said an x-ray was performed and found the eagle managed to avoid breaking or fracturing any bones in the crash but veterinarians said she was suffering from internal injuries. <laughs> a place called Hope said in a Facebook post Monday that the bird is recovering from its injuries. The group said the eagle has a good appetite and was seen taking a brief flight to the top of the perch. The group said the eagle will eventually be released back into the wild and um, she's beautiful now you know last week I'd done the story about the beer can with the dogs that that uh, brewing company was putting on their cans and we have a successful story from that woman recognizes long-lost dogs photo on beer can a Minnesota woman is due to be reunited, reunited with the dog who ran away from home three years, or years ago after a Florida brewery put the canine's face on a beer can while it was staying in a shelter. Monica Mathis said she was on social media when she saw a story about Motorworks Brewing putting photos of dogs on the Manatee County animal services shelter on their beer cans to find homes for the canines. Mathis, who lived in Florida before moving to Minnesota, quickly recognized one of the dogs, identified it, identified as Day Day by the shelter, was her long-lost dog Hazel. She said Hazel was an escape artist who would frequently flee home to go running loose and on the last occasion about three years ago, the dog was never found. Mathis contacted the shelter and shared information that proved she was Hazel's former owner. The shelter said Hazel had a microchip when she was brought in, but the information was out of date. Microchip and license your pets and remember to always keep your contact information up to date, the shelter said in a Facebook post. Manatee County Animal Services said Hazel's Voyage Home is being funded by the Friends of Manatee County Animal Services. That is a fantastic story. 
you can see my allergies are crack popping up. You would think that this time of year there wouldn't be any allergies, but of course there are. So um, that's it for today's podcast. And I am going to start working on this thing over here this afternoon. Um, and this afternoon, the uh, Tunisian crochet along that we are doing, I will be doing two stitches. And that is going to be the twisted knit stitch and the twisted simple stitch. And so you can try out those textures as well on your scarf or whatever you're doing or if you're just doing a practice piece to see the stitches. But um, that's what we're going to do this afternoon. So I will see you later for that for those of you that are joining us. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon. And remember, one act of kindness can change someone's life.